Hey guys, so I'm gonna tell you right off the bat that this example is not meant to wow your socks off, but I think it provides some solid educational value and we do have to learn how to defend a little bit, right? So this came from my game against um, my friend Harika Dronavali at this year's Cairns Cup. So it was played recently, like a month ago. And I was black, we had a Sicilian Sveshnika variation, and around here in the game, um, my position is clearly getting into dangerous territory. So in what sense? Well, we have a backwards pawn. It's really hard to advance it. It's keeping our pieces passive, right? This bishop isn't great, but honestly, this one's not great either. Um, this knight is extremely powerful. And then there's pressure on the A, a file and possibly even the B pawn is weak. So really lots of problems. I played the move rook c7 because my rook was doing nothing. And, uh, and here my opponent pretty quickly made a move that turned out to be um, letting me escape. So what should she do? Well, really, when you have a better piece, you don't want to be trading it. And the truth is that this rook on the open file is better than my rook. So some move like rook a5, avoiding the trade would have been perfectly reasonable. Uh, the queen could either come to a1 or it might come to d3. Um, you know, these rooks are not really comparable in power. So there's no reason for white to be trading them. But my opponent played queen a1, and I think she was just thinking that this position was surely advantageous for her. I mean, her queen looks pretty active. My bishop cannot even move at all. Like, what can I even do here? Seems bad, right? But the first principle we have for defending, guys, is we do want to defend uh, actively, Right, so always looking for our active possibilities. What is the move that I really want to play in this position? It's the move d5. Now, do I really want to play a move that loses a pawn though? And the answer is yes, I do. So, some simple calculation tells us that this pawn capture is not dangerous because I take the knight, getting rid of my bad bishop, and recapture the pawn. There's no pin with the queen on the d file. So black has gotten away with like activating all their pieces, solving their pawn structure problems, and it's just going to be a draw. So my opponent has a take with a knight. And this is where it helps to um, be able to see things in the future a little bit, right? So I captured, and this was the position that I was aiming for, because when you're defending, you really want to be attuned to this idea of like, oh, opposite colored bishops on the board, right? Because we know that those kinds of things give us better chances to make a draw, right? So when I was playing this move d5, it was really because I saw that these pieces were going to get traded and we were going to have bishops of opposite colors. And also my bishop is actually going to be quite active on the diagonal. And so I just played the move b4. Basically, I'm trying to induce you to put your pawns on light squares where I can always blockade them. You're not going to be able to push them further. And um, yeah, I kind of expected this to be a pretty easy uh, way to make a draw. My opponent played here, attacking the pawn. I have a lot of moves. I mean, I certainly could take, could probably just defend it. What did I do? I played queen a5, a little bit more active than the other options. I wanted to give my opponent something to worry about where she might feel like she has some danger to lose. And the game went like this. There was no reason to really avoid the queen trade for me. Um, and here we are, bishops of opposite color end game. I'm down a pawn. These pawns aren't really going anywhere. Lots of potential targets on the dark squares. It's going to take my opponent some time to move those pawns. She tries to do that. We start improving the king. Um, here we go. At some point, we're going to play this move f5 to trade more pawns, but not yet. And here we go. Right? So 
you activated the king, you're forcing this trade of pawns, and you've got the blockade on white's one extra pawn. So there's absolutely no way that white can ever win this position. So you see, guys, we got a really easy draw by virtue of this pawn sacrifice. And I think, oops, that's not what I meant to do. But basically, when you're defending, guys, you're always looking for ways to make your pieces better. You want to pay attention to the possibility of opposite colored bishops appearing on the board, or it could be like anything that you've heard gives you better drawing chances, like a rook end game, or maybe a queen end game, right? But bishops of opposite color certainly belongs like at the top of that category. When you think of that, you should think, oh, there is a pretty decent chance I could get a draw there. So that's how I saw this move. It was not actually difficult to conceive of this pawn sacrifice. It's my only active move. You know, in general, you should be dreaming of trading off your weaknesses in chess, opening up your pieces. So all I really had to do was a little bit of calculation to make sure that, um, you know, I wasn't just giving a pawn away. So yeah, my opponent, she helps me out with that um, queen move that allowed me to trade the rooks. And, you know, the lesson also is that when your pieces are more active, you know, don't trade them off, right? I mean, of course, she kind of, I would say, missed the d5 idea. I don't think, you know, if she would have seen this move coming, she would never have played into this line. So it is a little bit hidden, like, um, you know, even at, you know, for more experienced players. And I think for, you know, for you guys watching, yeah, this might seem a bit unusual, right? Like, like what is that? Uh, just giving away a pawn, right? But it's, uh, it's not just giving away a pawn. It's really about getting rid of weaknesses, activating your pieces, and going for that material balance that um, you know will offer you pretty good drawing chances. So defend actively, guys.